Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with uh, Deanna. Hello. Hi, Christian. And well, thanks for inviting me to to your podcast. Yeah, it's it's great to have you. And uh, for folks that don't know don't know who you are, who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? This is Diana. I am a Colombian Microsoft MVP living in the U.S. <laughs> based out in the Seattle area. I, I've been for more than 13 years actually in the technology field. I'm a systems engineer. Uh, that's my background. And I've been mostly in the IT side and doing lots of consultancy and working with Microsoft partners for the most. Mm -hmm. um, and also a community leader, of course. I I am co-founder of the Women's Voice IT community in Latin America, and also a community leader for for the Boston Healthcare Technology User Group and the Boston Power Platform community out here in the U.S. You know, grow my network. I've been here in the U.S. for a little bit more of two years, almost three years. I'm surprised, mm. time goes by. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm so glad for this opportunity and get to know more, you know, more people in the community as well. Well, this is great. And, and for folks too, we were just chatting before we started recording is that, you know, cloud and data center management MVP, like what does that yeah. include? Like what's your focus within that? <laughs> I know, if, you know, when people hear about the MVP, it's like, whoa. And, it, you know, by any means, I'm not, you know, expert in everything. And cloud and data center management is one of those that includes a lot because mm -hmm. it is like, I would say, like the hybrid <laughs> category in the MVP hour. And so... So we, you know, most of MVPs in our area knows uh, about the technologies and, and the infrastructure in general uh, of Microsoft uh, inside and hybrid and yep. the cloud, you know? Yep. So mm -hmm. I, I, I really love how, you know, we are able to understand and, you know, the architecture of uh, a company or a project and understanding network security, identity, uh, the 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 solutions and data, and, and connect, you know, all that uh, environment. Uh, so it's it's great to me to orchestrate and understand everything in general. You know, like knowing a little bit of everything uh, for uh, the solutions. Well, it, it sounds like to me, and I, you know, of course, I've, I've been in, uh, you know, been uh, for a long time, like the marketing guy that's in engineering organizations, which is kind of a weird thing, but surrounded by like the traditional networking engineer, you know, the like network operations folks, uh, you know, back in the day, so a while back, uh, that would do all the desktop support. So before so much was automated and things, but they were you know, building and supporting the builds that were on the laptops or the desktop units that we get as employees and making sure we're connected. And when there's any problems, they would come and wire things and make sure that we're running. And a lot of those people that I worked with, as the shift started to be made towards, you know, SaaS solutions, they started to do a lot of the networking and the data center side of those things, because you still need to have people that have knowledge of all those systems and those processes and how to stay connected, how to work with those services, you know, within your organization. And that's the transition that they made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's this still uh, a role in, I mean, if you think about where, where is the cloud? <laughs> there is a huge, massive data centers that of course, lots of things are automated, but there's still people like it's not you know that conversation that 
our jobs are going to disappear. Right. Well, that was a huge concern no, really. for a lot of the people that were in those roles was like, what's going to happen to my job? End and, of the work. <laughs> yeah. They never really went. I, maybe th there are, I'm sure there were people that, you know, lost their jobs. And a lot of those companies mm -hmm. realized they made mistakes and went and rebuilt those teams uh, because they realized, hey, we need to have these people that still understand these things. Sure. But, you know, I think it was at the same time a big step in, in technology because it really was, a, from my perspective, a, an opportunity to, to reimagine or to go forward with other roles. Like when it started happening, a, a, you know, data science start to, 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 to appear in technology and AI and lots of machine learning and other like branches in the technology side, you know, like before was like devs and IT, <laughs> you know, right. and then a little bit of uh, people that work with SQL and, and data like in the middle. Now it's a huge umbrella like for mobile, for cloud solutions, for AI. And now, you know, the metaverse and lots and lots of, of things that people can, you know, look uh, for their technical careers. So it's, yeah. it's really yeah. cool. You know, it was not a, a thing that make actually us uh, as, you know, an infrastructure disappear. No, it was really an evolution for, for technology. Well, there is so much that's going on and, and I mean, the data around like the number of services of cloud services that the average company uses, is an incredible, you know, number for some organizations, hundreds of different solutions, and there needs to be somebody there managing all of that and, and keeping that organized <laughs> and yeah. understanding the differences, the nuances between those things. Well, so, so you've talked a little bit, like you, so you've been doing this, this role for a while, like. What was your path to becoming an MVP? So what, did you do anything different or did just just fall out of the sky just happen? <laughs> no, not, not happen. You know, um, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to be to be short, but <laughs> and so when I was uh, I was uh, studying my my first bachelor because I have to. Uh, <laughs> and so I was uh, I was actually the youngest I mean, probably student ever, because I finished my school when I was 15 years old, and I went right away to the university. Oh, so hey, me, me too. I was, really? I was, I was 15. Hey, I like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so being a woman, right? Uh, so I was just that little kid <laughs> and, you know, uh, starting my career in technology where pretty much I had just like two, two other girls in, in my classroom. So it was a little bit awkward. Yeah. And not easy. I almost gave up in my career, but, you know, I keep uh, perseverant in, in learning and exploring technology in different ways. And so I remember I was like in fourth semester in my career and, and uh, just we just had a, a, a conference in, at the university and we were all invited to go to the auditorium. I'm like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> and it was, um, it was a conference led by the Microsoft student partners and some folks from Microsoft Colombia, because if uh, if you don't know and you're listening to this, I'm from Colombia. Yes, <laughs> and so I I went to to that uh, conference and I I really like it. You know, it was something about Visual Visual Studio, and I uh, I am like, whoa, Microsoft! Like, honestly, I didn't know what Microsoft was at that time. <laughs> So I went to, back to my next uh, class and I Google Microsoft. <laughs> I think that's Microsoft. And, and, I, and I saw that at the offices in the subsidiary, they had um, like a, a, a conference and free events. Like, you know, like I'm like, whoa, I kind of want to go. And then I click and register. Next, next day. 
I finished my my classes and and I went to the Microsoft offices <laughs> and you know it wasn't kind of awkward because there was you know people in the room and just one woman and then I went there to the big building like for first time in my life and then I was like yeah like like they're like where are you going and I'm like oh I'm, I'm attending this conference and then I I went there and I sat at the very back because all people was like look older to me <laughs> and, and I was like whoa I feel I feel weird but I sat there and I attend and I tried to understand because it was a little bit like I, I mean well, I'm sure me, a lot of new stuff and lots yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. and then someone approached me and say uh you know if I was looking like for my dad or something and I'm like no <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm like no I'm a student and I found about this event and, and I wanted to attend <laughs> uh, so that was my uh, introduction with Microsoft but I kept attending and I really like it and I started understanding and learning more about Microsoft and then I started my um, uh, internship and I went to a, a company that, uh, you know, uh, they're a big uh, uh, communication company. They, they run like many, um, uh, tele, what is this? Uh, uh, like different um, uh, call centers. Sorry, I was forgetting. Oh, okay. So like a telecom call center support centers? Yeah, uh -huh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I was there in the IT department managing the servers already. And and yeah, so um, that was the first step for me because I was in, starting to meeting uh, people at Microsoft. And then like a year, two years after maybe, they, they invite me, hey, you should, you know, become a, a technical influencer and, you know, and then I was like, I was probably 19 years old, if I'm right. And I I got ready for the stage and I delivered my first conference in the Microsoft Columbia subsidiary. And well, that was the big first step. Then I became a student partner. I, I was in that program for like nine years. And I in in the 2015 I uh, you know someone told me about the Microsoft MVP program and I knew a little bit about the program already but I'm like well should I okay let's do that and <laughs> I went through the process and and then in in that year I I was uh, recognized and I haven't checked uh, at you know today's day but um there's not many women in the cloud and data center uh, management expertise i believe i'm still the only one in our category in all the latam area um and you know still one of the youngest but actually we're getting more youngest uh, people from the, the student ambassadors so that's pretty exciting that is uh, i i think yeah. so i've known two that were i think both were 18 when they received their mvp that had kind yeah. of a similar like a, a student and one of them is the daughter of a good friend of mine and both of them are MVP, so father daughter mvps Oh, um, Paul, that's Clumsy, cool. Paul, Paul Colmsey <laughs> and his daughter Ashley out of Perth, Australia. And there was another yeah. young man, he was from Malaysia or Singapore, um, who was like 18 as, as well. But it's, but to did something similar, like both of them in like high school got involved with some aspects mm -hmm. of, of tech and got into Microsoft kind of programs, you know, learning about stuff all free, just started attending, got really passionate about it. So that's a, that's a great entrance into, you know, future yeah. to, to a career path. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, I really love it because it really brings lots of opportunities and open the doors for all of us, especially, you know, I will say, uh, you know, uh, coming from South America and uh, undeveloped country, it really means a lot uh, for, you know, all people uh, to, you know, to have actually people that uh, go you know come to the u.s and represent the country and it's such an in incredible success case for many like uh many times i was a sponsor for you know coming for some trips uh, by my university because it really means a lot for us and you know uh, doing the community work and helping other students as well and you know uh, professionals to to become microsoft specialists and and learning more about microsoft technologies um it's a it's such a it's such a great thing uh, as i say uh, you know same thing like there was not many people like really fans of microsoft i'm not going to discuss this yeah. but yeah. you know the, uh, it was uh, it was uh, it was great for for all of us to to join in and now I uh, can't remember but the MVPs that we have actually in in the Latin area has grown like two times almost three times it's 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 wonderful well, I know there's a lot of growth in that I actually uh, yeah. you know um, even within my company and I work I've got a former Microsoft person that's part of my team. She's based out of Miami. And, and so it covers a lot of LATAM and we've onboarded, uh, you know, partners and things. And I, so I have conversations, I've met MVPs down within LATAM and uh, I, I sadly, I've never been south of the U S border that direct. I've been all <laughs> over the world. I've gone left <laughs> and right. I've never gone south and, uh, and it's happening this year. Um, so we're going to start, start with, uh, uh, Mexico and and then we'll likely do Brazil this year as well. Do some events, yeah. doing some similar events at Microsoft yeah, exactly. facilities. They, so yeah, really we looking have over that. there the MVP Conf usually by November, December. That will be great. Well, it's you know, uh, but it's the these events <laughs> that you you talked about doing, and and so I was involved with uh, like the SharePoint Saturday events for years and years and years, and one of the things that we'd always try to do is reach out to the local universities and community colleges and let people know hey this is free you can mm -hmm. get a bunch of swag you can win some prizes um you can learn about all this cool technology and and come and every year we do this huge push and we get maybe four or five students that would show up and um, you know, oh. with like we, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a Saturday. And so when, you know, when you're 18 to 20, you don't want to go sit and hear people lecture about technology for the whole day on a Saturday. And especially if the weather's nice outside, uh, Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, you know, oh. kind of like your story. I mean, it, there have, we have people that are involved in our user group that kind of came through that path and got involved young. And it's, Again, it can be very meaningful, very important to your career. Well, yeah, I think one of the uh, one of the coolest things that I've seen in the last years is actually working together uh, the Microsoft MVP program with the Microsoft Student Learning and Learning Ambassadors. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, I when when I started in the program, I was still a Microsoft student partner. It is definitely a, a big, uh, you know, a team to be able to connect with the people at universities that, you know, in, to invite all the students and with the communities and, and Microsoft, of course. Um, I think actually that's one of the coolest things working with the student ambassadors because, you know, that's the... Does the, the a benefit I will say to to be between a big company and and your university, you know, to bring those opportunities. 
Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I'll say maybe next time uh, I, you know, I still have contacts uh, down there in many universities and with the local leaders. So it will be great to, to, to bring way more students to the conferences. <laughs> well, that's always why it's, it's it, uh, I, I'm sure you agree with this statement too, is that why you know, anybody that's watching this or listening to this is like, if you, um, you know, to reach out and talk to Deanna, myself, and any, any anybody that has a, an MVP, we're all very social people. We want people to reach out and ask questions and say, how can I get more involved? How can I become an MVP? And, and so all of us, you know, mentor people, we help out, we provide information. And, uh, and so if you see that badge on somebody's profile, it's pretty much guaranteed that they will be helpful <laughs> and exactly. help, helping you find your path into uh, technology. And so you just have to reach out. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're here for helping others to build their careers as well. Like in, at some point, point we, we have done, you know, already. And, and also, if you are passionate about uh, technology, learning and sharing, especially, uh, so it, this is a great opportunity to become an, a Microsoft MVP. Yeah, the time is great for that. There's a lot going on, a lot of really fun stuff. Well, Deanna, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk today and to get to know you and and you're out in one of my favorite parts of the world. I, I, so I hope to, uh, I still have a uh, you know, sister who's in Monroe. I, of course, lived in Duval out on the east side, you know, near closer. I was thinking I was 10 miles away from Microsoft campus and I miss it out there. Though my <laughs> wife, not as much. She, the, the rain depressed her. I loved the rain. I miss the rain. Uh, uh, yeah, I like saying that this is the, the city of the clouds. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love that. It really is, you know, because the weather, of course, but actually it's kind of fun and, you know, that we have Microsoft and Amazon and other companies here that, of course, are cloud. <laughs> yes, there's a lot that's a lot that's happening there. Well, Deanna, for <laughs> folks that want to connect with you and reach out to you, what are the best ways to reach you? Um, I, 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 I am a, a Carolina TV. Carolina TV in social media for the most in LinkedIn, Twitter. So you can find me there. And yeah, that's the best way, you know, uh, ping me anytime. <laughs> well, excellent. And we'll of course provide all the links within the blog post and add on yeah. the, the, uh, the, the YouTube page as well. So, well, Deanna, it's been great talking to you and we'll uh, hopefully see you next spring at the very latest in person at the, hopefully the next MVP summit. I know. Yeah, looking forward to that. It will be so exciting. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. Wow.